Hello, in this section I will talk about vaporizer, a very important equipment used for delivering inhalational anesthetic. Now most of inhalational anesthetic at room temperature are liquid and we need an equipment to vaporize them in the form of vapor added to the carrier gas for delivering it to the patient and this is done by device vaporizer. So before talking about the vaporizer, its definition, its design and the factors affecting its uh, working principle, we need to understand what is law of vaporization. As I said, most of the uh, inhalational anesthetics are liquid at room temperature. So wh what do I mean by this vaporization? How do we make them in the vapor form? So liquid by nature, it has a, the molecule of the liquid has a higher cohesion between them compared to the gas. But though they have a higher cohesion, there are some molecules of liquid which will try to escape the surface of the liquid. And if there is the space above the liquid, uh, that is a vacuum above the liquid or other gas above the liquid, then these molecules which escape from the surface of the liquid they are called vapors and the molecules which escape from the surface of the liquid, the vapors, if they are present in a closed compartment, the pressure applied by these vapors on the wall of the compartment is called vapor pressure. So what all till now I have discussed, the molecules of liquid has mutual attraction or cohesion between them, but some molecule escapes and the molecules which escapes they are the vapors. So, if the liquid surface is exposed to air or other gases or to the vacuum, some molecules will escape from its surface and this is what is called evaporation or vaporization. And the molecules which has escaped, it is called vapor, that is called vapor. The pressure exerted by this vapor on the wall of the, of the surrounding is called something called vapor pressure vapor pressure. Now, we need to understand something called saturated vapor pressure also, saturated vapor pressure. So, let us say this is a closed container, this is the liquid okay? and at a particular temperature, some of the vapors of the liquid is escaping the surface of the liquid. Some of it is escaping and some is also returning back to the surface of the liquid. Now, this e equilibrium of escaping and returning back becomes equal. I mean, the molecules escaping the surface of liquid, molecule coming back to the surface of the liquid, they become equal. At this equilibrium, equilibrium, whatever pressure is applied by the vapors on the wall of the vessel, that is called saturated vapor pressure at that particular temperature. Okay? So, we have a concept of vapor, saturated vapor pressure. Okay. Now, what does this vaporization of the liquid, what are the principle which guides the vaporization of the liquid? Few important things guide the uh, principle of vaporization. Number one, temperature. If the temperature of the liquid is increased, the kinetic energy of the molecules of the liquid will increase and now liquid from the surf, molecules from the surface of the liquid will not only escape, even molecules from the bottom of the liquid with a high kinetic energy would escape and become vapor, right? So, increase in temperature increases the vaporization. So, as the temperature increases, the vaporization increases, okay? Okay. Now, at a temperature, when the liquid starts boiling, at that temperature, the vapor pressure exerted by the liquid on the surface of the container is equal to the atmospheric pressure, right? So, what I am trying to tell, a liquid's boiling point is the temperature at which its saturated vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So, boiling point is at which the saturated vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. So, if at 20 degrees Celsius, the saturated vapor pressure of halothane is 243, okay? If I increase its temperature to 50 degrees Celsius, the saturated vapor pressure, this is the boiling point of halothane, 
is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So, the, the uh, temperature at which the saturated vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure is what is called boiling point of the, of the liquid. Okay? Now, the other thing which affects the vaporization is volatility. Volatility of the liquid. If the liquid is more volatile, the cohesive force is less. So, they would, boil, they would form vapor faster. So, liquid with higher volatility, with higher volatility forms vapor easily, right? They forms vapor easily compared to liquid with low volatility. Now, the next thing is surface area. Higher the surface area of the above the liquid, above, higher the vacuum above the liquid, more would be the vaporization. So, increased surface area, increased surface area increases vaporization. Okay. And then, if we remove the vapor from the vicinity of the liquid, again the vaporization will increase. So, removal of vapor above the uh, surface of the liquid again would increase the vaporization. So, all these factors affect vaporization and we need to keep it in mind and few more factors which will be discussed further would help us in understanding how the vaporizer works. Right? Now, let us discuss what is vaporizer and how it is designed. As I told, vaporizer is anesthesia Age, anesthetic agent delivery system, anesthetic agent that is your inhalational anesthetic agent delivery system or vapor delivery system. We define the vaporizer as a device which allows the vapor formation of the inhalational anesthetic and mixing with it with the carrier gas. So, vaporizer is a device which allows the vaporization of the liquid anesthetic agent and its subsequent admixture with the carrier gas for administration to the patient. How does it do it? What principle guides the designing of the vaporizer is what we have to discuss. But before going into the design of the vaporizer, let us make clear few more important uh, physics of the gas, few more important points on the physics of the gas. So, when the inhalational anesthetic mixes with other gas, that is the carrier gas, oxygen, nitrous oxide and an inhalational anesthetic vapor. How, what, wha, how do we define its pressure? Now, the, there is a gas admixture. Total pressure of the gas is equal to the sum of the individual total pressure of every gas. This is Dalton's law. The part of the total pressure due to any one gas in the mixture is the partial pressure of that particular gas and the total pressure is sum of all the partial pressure and the partial pressure of a particular gas depends only on the temperature of the agent. It is unaffected by the total pressure of the entire gas mixture and highest pressure exerted, partial pressure exerted by the gas at a given temperature is its vapor pressure. Okay? Now, the relationship between partial pressure and volume percent. So, we talked about partial pressure. So, if there is a gas, let us say I am only giving oxygen to my patient, okay. I am giving only oxygen to my patient and the oxygen is, the pressure is 760 mm of Hg, which is equal to the total atmosphere pressure. That is, this is the total pressure, atmospheric pressure. So, I am giving 100 percent oxygen. Now, I mix with oxygen, I mix with oxygen isofluorine or sevofluorine. So, now in the gas, the total pressure which is equal to 760 mm of Hg, the atmospheric pressure which will be delivered, sum is the pressure of oxygen, sum is the pressure of isofluorine. Now, let us say the pressure of isofluorine is 239. Okay? Pressure of oxygen is remaining 760 minus 239. How, what is the volume percent of iso fluorine in the total gas mixture, how we will calculate. So, volume percent is calculated by the pressure of the partial pressure of that particular gas divided by the total pressure into 100. So, as I talked about isofluorine, when we mix it with oxygen, let us say its partial pressure is 238. So, 238 by total pressure is 31. So, 31 percent isofluorine is in the gas admixture. 
this is how the relationship between partial pressure and the volume is set. Okay. When the vaporization happens, what happens? The calories are required to convert 1 gram of liquid into vapor and that is what is called heat of vaporization. When the vaporization happens, the cooling of the remaining liquid happens. So, liquid temperature decreases because the calories has been used as the vaporization proceeds. Now, flow of heat from the surroundings down the gradient try to establish the equilibrium. So, let us say this is a, vapor, a vaporizer. It is made up of metal and this tries to stabilize the loss of heat and this is the liquid present in it. When the vaporization happens, the liquid cool and even the surrounding vessel also cool. But gradually the equilibrium is achieved, right? Gradually the equilibrium is achieved by maintaining something called heat bath. Heat, let us say, uh, by either external supply of the heat or by the metal which makes the vaporizer. This heat is, com the loss of heat is compensated. But this can be compensated at a finite level only, at a certain level only. So, when this cooling happens and the heat fluctuate, the temperature fluctuation happens, then there should be some compensatory mechanism to compensate for this heat loss so that the output of the vapor in the total gas is not affected. So, we need something called, because of this heat of vaporization, we call, need something called temperature compensation to be practiced in designing the vaporizer. So, we will talk about how the temperature compensation will happen. Okay. Then specific heat, one definition we need to know. A substance specific heat is the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of the substance by 1 degree Celsius. For water, it is 1 calorie per gram per degree increase in the temperature. The higher the specific degree heat, more the heat required to raise the temperature of the given quantity of substance. Temperature change more gradually for the materials with high specific degree, specific heat. Okay. Okay. Thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity is the measure of speed which with the heat flows through a substance. So, the metal with which the vaporizer is, is made should have a high thermal conductivity for to compensate for the loss of temperature which is happening due to this vaporization, due to this heat of vaporization. The cooling of the liquid, liquid temperature is decreasing. So, from the metal made with, with which the vap uh, vaporizer is made, the flow of heat should be, should happen to the liquid, the compensation of this loss of liquid, loss of temperature should happen. So, a, the metals which are, which have high thermal conductivity, this will allow the compensation to have faster and today vaporizer should be made from the metals which are, have a high heat of thermal, con high thermal conductivity. So, Copper has the highest thermal conductivity followed by aluminium, brass, steel and glass. Previously, the vaporizer was made of glass and steel also. Today, most of the vaporizer is made up of copper. And not only the metal, we have wicks surrounding the metal which also compensate for this heat loss. So, wicks in contact with metal, so the heat loss due to the vaporization is quickly replaced. But this is a finite replacement, right? This is only a finite replacement, okay? Material used for the construction of the vaporizer, as I said, copper, aluminium, brass, steel, glass, these can be used. Copper is nowadays most commonly used. Aluminium is used for MRI compatible vaporizer. The agent, the liquid which is poured in the vaporizer, they have different physiochemical properties. Their potency, their boiling point, their uh, vapor pressure, their molecular weight, they all differ from one another. So, that is why most of the vaporizer are nowadays individual agent specific and they are calibrated for that particular inhalational agent. So, these are the four important agent iso, halothane, iso, sevo and desflurane which we are using. And if we just compare them, then desflurane is much different from the other agent. So, it needs a special vaporizing principle. So, the vaporizer of desflurane would be entirely different from the vaporizer of the other agents. Other agents, more or less, their physiochemical properties resemble to some extent. So, their vaporizer is similar, but all they do not have a 
same potency, same property, every agent. So, though they are similar, their vaporizer are agent specific, right? We cannot use one agent in the vaporizer of the other agent. They are individual calibrated according to that particular agent only, okay? So, how do we classify the vaporizer? Vaporizer is classified on six important points. The first point, how the, the method of regulating the output, how the output is regulated, how the vapor is added and how much vapor is added, how it is regulated. Then the second method of vaporization, how does the vaporization happens? Then where it is located in circuit, out of the circuit, whether it is temperature compensated or not, whether it is agent specific or not, and whether it has a high resistance or low resistance. So, on these six points, it is classified. So, coming on the method of regulating the output. 